This video is sponsored by Ubisoft. Star Wars Outlaws pre-order is available now by clicking the link in the description below. Star Wars Outlaws development started with a simple idea, let players experience a scoundrel fantasy in an open world. Fans have been asking for a truly open world Star Wars game for years, and as fans of the franchise, the team at Ubisoft's massive entertainment wanted it too. So when Ubisoft heard that Lucasfilm Games was looking to collaborate with other developers on a new Star Wars game, Massive jumped at the chance and got to work on a pitch. Their biggest ambition from the start was having an all-encompassing open-world experience that let players seamlessly go from flying a ship, to landing on a planet or moon, to riding into a city, then going inside and sitting at a bar. So any central character the team came up with needed a believable explanation for roaming the galaxy, investigating new worlds, and getting into unique situations that had accommodated wide range of gameplay mechanics. Massive thought about all the different character archetypes Star Wars had to offer, and quickly decided they needed a scoundrel outlaw. Someone who wouldn't be out of place flying ships, smuggling contraband, shooting enemies, or sneaking around dangerous places. When Massive finally got to pitch their idea, Lucasfilm loved it, and started pitching ideas of their own, like setting the game between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Outlaw's creative director Julian Garrity told StarWars.com, when we pitched the idea, Lucasfilm were the ones who went, okay, this is the ideal period. This one year period between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Because the criminal syndicates are so active. Because there's so much chaos out there in the universe. And you know, we were trying to stay calm in the room in San Francisco, but inside there was a huge, huge celebration. At this point in the timeline, the Rebel Alliance scattered after their defeat at the Battle of Hoth. This meant the game's story didn't have to center around the Galactic Civil War so the team could focus on the thriving underworld and how their scoundrel outlaw will fit into it all. Work on outlaw story and world began by establishing and fleshing out that scoundrel character, Kay Vess. She's a rookie thief with ambitions of branching out and exploring the galaxy. The team developed Kay as someone who doesn't have all the answers, putting her understanding of the game world more in line with first-time players and making her more relatable. It also gave Kay a unique perspective among other Star Wars scoundrels like Han Solo, who's clearly no stranger to scum and villainy. Star Wars scoundrels tend to come in pairs, and just as Han has Chewie, Kay has Nyx. Nyx is her trusty companion, and the closest thing Kay has to family. The team always envisioned the player controlling Kay and Nyx at the same time, with Nyx being an extension of the player's powers and actions. As well as attack enemies, he can sneak into places Kay can't fit in, help you open doors, push levers, activate mechanisms, or even make a noise to distract enemies. Another big part of Outlaw's gameplay is exploration and interaction that has lasting consequences. If you get caught stealing from a gang, they might refuse to work with you. Or if you choose not to bribe an Imperial Guard, they might send squadrons to hunt you down. Your actions in the game will impact your standing with different factions, creating threats and opportunities. And by completing missions and progressing in both the main story and side quests, you'll be able to upgrade your blaster, your ship, your speeder, adding new modules and elements. Speaking of speeders, while Luke Skywalker's speeder had a more hot rod inspiration, Kay's was inspired by motocross. Specifically, the team based her speeder on a classic Swedish design that they gradually removed elements from. And the more they removed, the more it took that retro-futuristic aesthetic found in the original trilogy. Kay's speeder can be customized and upgraded, as can her ship, the Trailblazer. Some of Ubisoft's other studios have made arcade flight and combat simulation games in the past, and Massive took full advantage of this experience when developing Outlaw's ship combat. With ship combat being such a core part of the game's world, it needed to feel right and be accessible. Garidi told IGN, Our main focus was how we can make this as accessible as possible, because movement in a whole full-on 360 environment is quite challenging. So it's about bringing the pace down, but making every combat encounter feel very intimate and explosive. There's a chase cam control where you click it down and you're going to chase the enemy automatically and it's just about shooting precision. So a lot of the movement is much easier for you to be able to approach this. And you have small scale battles as well as very large scale battles. When it came to designing the ship itself, Massive scoured consumer catalogs from the 70s and 80s looking for electronics, and used the kit-bashing design philosophy from the original trilogy to flesh out the ship. Every aspect of the game's world was researched in this way, especially the environments. The team dove into all the series media, comics, books, TV shows, films, aiming to make Outlaw's world authentic. They even looked at George Lucas's original inspirations like old spaghetti westerns. In the words of narrative director Navid Kavari, our goal is that you feel like you're stepping into Star Wars. 
and that means going back to those Macquarie concepts, going back to Joe Johnston's storyboards, Phil Tippett's creature designs, and creating a lived-in galaxy. The game needed worlds that'd attract a scoundrel, so Massive thought about where scum and villainy might thrive. And while they wanted to create new worlds for the game, there's one iconic location they knew they had to include, and that's Tatooine. Garaiti said, The cantina in Moss Eisley is going to be recreated in this game, and if I turn my mind back to when I first saw it, you do want to investigate all those nooks and crannies. You do want to investigate the locations that George Lucas didn't show on camera and be the director of your own adventure. Garaiti also mentioned how recreating Tatooine was a big challenge, as making sure everything we've already seen fit in the game world felt like solving a puzzle. To help them put the pieces together, the team looked back at the Star Wars DK visual guides and worked with Lucasfilm to make sure they included the most important parts and the most fun areas to explore. One of the worlds that was made specifically for outlaws is the Moon Tashara. The team wanted Tashara to have a big city with a thriving underworld surrounded by open plains that players could explore on Kay's speeder. Lucasfilm has a general rule that anything in the Star Wars universe should be 80% familiar and 20% alien and fantastical like how Tatooine's ordinary-looking deserts have two suns sitting in the sky. To give Tashara a fantastical element and make it fit the Star Wars galaxy, the team made its capital city, Muragana, built into a huge rock carved by the winds on Tashara. This world took inspiration from the African savanna, and the team even went to Tanzania to record audio and capture the soundscape. When creating new worlds like this, the team decided environments should be handcrafted rather than procedurally generated, letting them focus on the details. Besides familiar worlds like Tatooine and new worlds like Tashara, the team also worked on expanding existing worlds that fans didn't know much about, like Kijimi. Lucasfilm senior creative executive Matt Martin told IGN, Kijimi was created for the rise of Skywalker, but we really only had a glimpse briefly. Being able to use it for an open world game allowed us to really explore every aspect of what that world could be. Now we're seeing what Kijimi was like around 30 years before the time we see it in Rise of Skywalker. One way the team expanded Kijimi's world was by creating the Ashiga clan, which were designed in close collaboration with Lucasfilm. This faction was designed around having a highly hierarchical society based on honor and tradition, with a sort of hive mind mentality. The Ashiga have an insect-inspired design and are based on the Melito, like the character Sarko Plank from Force Awakens. They also have poor vision but heightened hearing, a choice the developers made so players could have more varied combat and stealth-based encounters with syndicates. Star Wars Outlaws is coming to Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and PC on August 30th, 2024. Pre-order any version of Outlaws by clicking the link in the description below, and you'll get a Kessel Runner cosmetic. Or order the Gold or Ultimate Edition, and you'll get into early access on August 27, three days before release. Thanks again to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching.